All right, phase three is when we layer in cues. It's one thing to say the posture, it's another thing to say the action, and oftentimes as coaches, you're gonna have a classroom full of people who have been around, maybe you've got one or two people there for their very first class. So you're gonna have a certain amount of flow going on. Even if you just said the posture, a lot of the class is gonna know what's going on. But we have a responsibility as a coaching staff to deliver cues to help people improve uh, their positions, get more out of their positions, and also just kind of educate them in terms of how the position they're in might translate later to the workout that they're gonna be doing in the middle portion of our class. Not to mention the fact that if you have relatively new athletes in the class, we have to deliver some cues to help them get better and sort of figure out what they're doing. There are a million different cues that you can deliver, and so obviously I can't cover them all right now. We're gonna talk a lot about this in the seminar, bring your own creative ideas. Uh, but generally speaking, cues are really simple, I, uh, simple things that we can say to our class to help them improve their posture. I should say that there are three types of cues. Verbal cues, the ones that we're all going to be able to feel more comfortable with, that's when we say things to people. Extend your elbows, extend your leg, tighten up your abs, bring your rib cage down to your belly button. These are verbal cues. Visual cues are when we actually show them, right? We might say, rotate your pinkies to the front, rotate your pinkies to the front, and we're actually miming it in our own bodies to help the athletes see something, so that's a visual cue. And then tactile cues, sticking with rotating your, your pinkies to the front. Tactile cues might be where we actually walk up to the athlete and put our hands on the athlete and deliver tactile adjustments to their posture to make sure that they're doing things properly. And the, a great coach is gonna be able to use all three types of cues. Right now, I'm gonna focus on verbal cues. We will layer in visual and tactile in the seminar when we're all together and we're practicing in the room. But just, just to, so you kind of hear what it sounds like, this is kind of what it would sound like to flow people through with posture, action, and cue. Mountain pose, reach your hands up high, rotate the pinkies to the front, palms facing each other, lock the ribs down to the belly button, squeeze the glutes. It's a lot of cues, you're not gonna always use that many cues, but that's an example. Side by stretch, right hand grabs left wrist, pull it up and over the top. Let's make sure that the left shoulder stays square to the front of the room. Good, take it across the other direction. Side body to the left, swapping out hands. This time the right shoulder stays square. Mountain pose, baby back bend, goal post the arms, lift the chest and gaze. I want you to squeeze your glutes to support your spine as you do this. Mountain pose, forward fold, head and chest lowering down over the top. Relax your neck, let the top of your head hang long and loose to the floor. Let the whole back decompress, let it round out. Open arm twist to the right, widen your base, keep your left hand down, reach your right hand high. Rotate through the whole upper back, get some thoracic rotation, the whole spine is twisting to the right side. Swap it out, right hand down, left hand does likewise, opening up the other direction. You can see that, relax for a second, you can see that when we go right and left, you don't need to like double down and say the exact same thing over again, but we're still giving them some cues or at least reminding them of the cue that we used on the opposite side. High plank, plant your hands and step your feet back. Shoulders should be stacked over wrists, hips in line with shoulders and, and heels. Long, strong line of energy from top of the head down to the heels. Low plank, shifting forward and down, keeping those elbows pinned. Flip your toes, lift your chest, excuse me, I just reached that. Upward facing dog, flip your toes and lift your chest. Pressing so hard into the tops of your feet that the quads are off the ground. Your abs are still on right now. Downward facing dog. Toes flip over, set the hips high. Right now, dropping your chest through. When we've got a flat back, you can think about extending the knees and sinking the heels down to the floor. Crit scoot up just a little bit for me. Awesome. Moving on to our sun B. Again, posture, action, cue. These are options. Three-legged down dog, right leg reaches high. Square the right hip and extend the right leg. Good, low lunge, step through, hold here. Stack that right knee over the top of that right heel. Keep the chest off the quads. Crescent lunge, chest comes up, hands come up. We have active shoulders, left hip pulls forward, left leg long and strong. Warrior two, ground the back heel, open up. Arms to a T, eyes through those front fingertips. That front knee tracking out over the middle of those toes, right? Not caving in, we're rotating out over the toes. Extended side angle, shifting forward and down. Rotating the top shoulder open, getting long through that left hand, left arm to 12 o'clock. Reversing our warrior, 
staying low in the right leg or the front leg, that's perfectly fine to say. Right arm up and back, getting a big stretch through the right side of our body. Little to no weight on that back hand. Low lunge, swing those hands down to either side of the front foot, downward facing dog. So there again, you can see that I'm delivering a lot of cues. You're not always gonna deliver a lot of cues. Those are just verbal cues. We wanna add in tactile and visual cues where possible as we get more confident, more comfortable as a coach. And then also the last thing I'm gonna sort of recap what I started phase one with is that as the class progresses, you don't always deliver all that information, right? The first time through, yeah, you're gonna give them a lot of things to think about. The second time through, maybe it's more of a posture action, posture action, you throw a cue in, posture action, keeps the pace up a little bit. Maybe the third time, if there is a third time, if you revisit some of these postures, you're really just kind of flowing them through because the pace is coming up in our class. At any rate, that's phase three. Reminder, I want you to practice, start with your postures, then layer in your actions, then mess with your posture action cue, so that when you show up at the seminar, you're ready to practice this stuff with some level of fluidity.